Our next presentation is by Alan Steele of UNDP. This talk will look at big data, Indonesian style, connecting communities across the oceans. Okay, if I can just make a slight correction, uh, Kim. Um, I'm from uh, Fisher, uh, and we are actually working with uh, UNDP here in uh, uh, Indonesia. Um, <clears throat> but my presentation today is, is, is really a, a lifetime's experience in not just the fish industry, but uh, across multiple uh, food sectors. Uh, latterly in my career, I was working with uh, Coca-Cola and McDonald's. Um, and I came to Bali uh, actually to, to retire about five years ago. And uh, I was approached by one of the fishing community here who was trading about 50 million pounds worth of uh, tuna fish and blue crab with America. And he asked, he's experiencing problems um, uh, in his, his company um, with regards to the traceability of his products being exported to America. Um, and he said, Look, you used to be the go-to man for traceability. Can you develop something for me that will protect me? Um, and it, it, I probably was a traceability company, but actually what he was looking for was artificial intelligence or machine learning based on seven, eight years of collected data. And he wanted to look at a different way of collecting data and to protecting his business. And uh, I, I started to develop software from scratch um, with really what was my pension. And uh, based on all the mistakes I had made and all the mistakes that uh, other people had made over the years. Uh, and there was many uh, failed attempts, I think, that I saw over about 25 years of people trying to develop software systems. Uh, and, you know, more and more hype around traceability and, you know, a lot of imagery um, about where the industry was going. But I had a, a specific uh, uh, specification, I can put it that way, on what this particular client wanted. And we started, I got rid of all the ego of, of trying to world, work on the world stage and all the things I've been through in my business life. And I went right back to the beginning to the small scale fisheries. Um, uh, you know, $25 million uh, of blue swimming crab is a lot of crabs. Um, and uh, I decided, you know, we had to go and look at the fishermen, you know, the cooking stations, the picking stations, uh, the processing. Uh, and involve the, the, the fishermen uh, from day one. So some basic steps to achieve success uh, based on our experiences and to build an intelligent platform, um, we started at the beginning. So we involved the small scale fisheries. Um, I was also asked to, to, to join another uh, company called Each Mile, which uh, they were building the first mile, what they call the first mile, which was an app collecting data on board boats uh, and rewarding the fishermen with a coin, with a, a reward. Um, and the one thing I did learn was, and I think it's come up quite a bit, uh, I think even in Amos's uh, presentation, you're know, trying to engage the industry is really difficult. Uh, trying to engage people to share their data is even more difficult. Um, and I certainly don't have all the answers. But what I've built over the past three, four years in Fisher is a very basic system uh, using uh, Android phones, the very uh, bottom end technology. Um, and I've built it on collaborations, um, trying to engage everybody in the industry. Because um, like my client um, who is, uh, his client is the third biggest fish company in America. Uh, and the main species are yellow from tuna, blue swimming crab and octopus. Um, and to, to, to collect that amount of data uh, from all these different picking stations, fishermen, we have to generate millions of individual trace codes, QR codes, we call them trace codes, um, every month because we, we, we mark every fish, we give every individual tuna fish that enters the factory a QR code and follow all the way through the factory. Um, same with every basket of blue swimming crab, uh, and not just in Indonesia, 
uh, Kona, we, we also work in the uh, Philippines, uh, in Sri Lanka, and in uh, India. Um, and and th these are huge challenges for technology. And it was a huge challenge for me uh, on a limited budget. Um, I wasn't able to access grants, um, but you know, my client wasn't prepared to pay for the, the development. Um, and it's, it's a very slow process trying to get money from investors uh, and a soul destroying process. Uh, and uh, listening to some of the other uh, presenters, you know, Team Fish, et cetera, you know, where they're, they're looking for funding, it's, it's soul destroying. Um, but we, you know, we're at the situation now where we're, we're producing um, about between six and 10 million uh, trace codes every month and, and scanning six to 10 million trace codes every month. And the client wants to double that production. Uh, so we, we as a very small boutique software company will be, you know, 20, 30 million trace codes every month, which will let my client or let us uh, anticipate pricing for the future. It will let us anticipate where to source our crab or our tuna. Um, and give them predictive analytics. Um, you know, we are also scraping the web, but we've, we were pretty unsuccessful at that. But we did have all this data. Um, and just, you know, we take everything pretty logically, you know, the, from the harvesting, the processing, the shipping. And, you know, to look Kim, to what you were talking about, you know, the UNDP um, that is working with uh, Each Mile, a uh, fish coin company. Um, we developed a, a tag and release uh, software suite, which allows us to tag fish that are undersized, put them back into the ocean and record that. And then when they're caught again, um, it's actually it's in Indonesia, in North Sulawesi, we can then uh, link these fish to our own platform where we're tagging the fish as they enter the factory. So um, we've got 400 small communities in, in uh, North Sulawesi, which is thousands of fishermen uh, and communities um, that are using state-of-the-art software. Um, each of them has each of the fishermen has a mobile phone, a low-end mobile phone, and with minimum training, um, we're letting them scan data into our platform, uh, which is uh, allowing us hopefully to reward the fishermen for giving their their, their data. Um, which you know is a small part of a solution um, of solving the the, the 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 acquiring data that uh, Amos was alluding to, but you know the, the other challenge we face is um, predicting the future and predicting pricing um, is based on thousands and thousands of individual animals, and you can see here this is the the, the octopus platform, um, and. Another of the challenges we faced was trying to make software look sexy. Um, so you know, we had to bring in uh, graphic designers, we had to bring in people with UI, user interface experience, and uh, also user experience to make something look good. Um, people getting bored just with numbers, numbers, numbers. Um, and it was one of the things I learned with working with Coca-Cola, you know, you can uh, you can collect as much data as you want, but unless it's meaningful and can actually be used, um, it was just an exercise in developing technology. And you can see here, you know, uh, location is a big, big uh, uh, part of what we do. And we just use the GPS on the mobile phone to record where the fish has landed. Most of these are day fishermen. You know, they're not going long distances. And, um, and just putting, you know, we called it eight legs, so it was a bit of fun. Um, but the, you know, the, the fun goes once you start developing this huge amount of data. Um, this is one of the older versions uh, that I uh, developed. And again, it was collecting all this information to make it look and be useful. SIMP is a sales import mon monitoring program for the uh, American uh, exports. So we produced a unique fish ticket and imported all of that, the collected traceability data into our platform to allow these containers of tuna fish uh, that we're exporting from Indonesia over to the States. 
and you know, using a little mobile phone that was less than hundred dollars, we're protecting a container of fish that's between half a million and quarter of a million dollars of tuna fish. So, you know, we're working with fishermen that are earning three hundred dollars a month maximum. Uh, with a company that's it's, that uh, is trading three hundred million dollars uh, and linking it all together, and that's the scale of what um, we're working with in Indonesia. Um, thousands and thousands and thousands of individual fishermen are contributing their data. And this is the first time I've actually been able to achieve anything with uh, the, the community uh, of fishermen and link it all together. And the guys at Fishcoin and Each Mile were interested in working with me because the one thing they weren't able to do was to acquire the interest of the fishermen. The people they wanted to reward were the most difficult people to, to bring on board. Um, and what I've tried to do with my background is accountancy. I'm an accountant by profession, was to monetize um, collecting data, um, to reward people for collecting data. And uh, with my, my, my partnership and my small interest uh, in uh, other companies, I've been able to find a market for my data and for my customers' data and to, for everyone to be rewarded uh, in some small way. It's, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a coin, it's not a token, but it's a token of a reward. Uh, we were topping up fishermen's mobile phones uh, by allowing, by rewarding them for giving us their data. So we've got that working. So the fishermen are rewarded, then the, the processors that rewarded uh, again for uh, acquiring that data and the American company pays for that extra traceability data. So, you know, it's, it's, it's probably 25 years of development, um, all in this one platform of Fisher, which is now predicting the future for my client. Um, it's providing, uh, We've got it on the blockchain now. Uh, you can see on some of the screens here. This is test data. But each individual fish, you can go right back to the individual fisherman for all these thousands of tons of fish that we're processing every month uh, and exporting. And we found also that each of these, this, this was only part of the list that we were now satisfying with our very simple application that feeds into our platform that was originally to predict just pricing. And I, I have an interest in the tuna business as well, where I'm the CFO, and we're using this data to supply all of these uh, points, um, which for me has been you know, a lifetime's work, now working in reality. Um, and it's been my personal observation you know, about um, we're nothing without the fishing communities. Um, you know, I, I took a route uh, in my working life of ignoring the people that were actually catching the fish. Uh, I've gone back to basics. And the business is a success as a result of working with the fishermen as opposed to the supermarkets who, in, in many cases, didn't really want the information and they wanted it for their sustainability um, statements etc but you know th there was never any financial reward for a technology company uh, offering that data but with the fishermen it's completely different uh, and i think you know with all the parties you know and i've listed just a few there um, governments fleet owners other technology businesses hotels the people that are taking money from the industry and you know, are all relying on a fisherman at the beginning of the day. And you know, for me, technology has now got the ability to distribute the rewards to the fishing industry you know, with giving them information um, you know, by telling them where to fish, as opposed to when I started 25 years ago, um, where everybody was concentrating on developing technology to hunt the fish, to catch more fish, to process fish more quickly. It's now gone full circle. You know, these, these technologies exist, but the world seems to be uh, focusing on, you know, what, what, 50 years we've lost 60% of all uh, animals on earth 
uh, through overfishing, through hunting, by building. Um, and I think now we have the ability with our technologies to, to stop that um, and to stop it from the bottom rather from the top. Um, you know, I, I think I've noted here, one fisherman with a mobile phone in Indonesia makes very little difference. But we've got two million fishermen here with mobile phones that can start to make a difference. And, you know, from my retirement five years ago, I'm now start working 60, 70 hours a week back in the fishing industry, uh, hopefully contributing to saving a little bit of our oceans and our planet. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. That was a, a real life story and a very interesting one at that in, in making, making people along this value chain being really seen and recognized. And this is something that maybe we just weren't able to do in the past and that you've brought um, tools and we're developing new tools to allow it to happen. So I love your term, monetize the collection of data. And once we monetize some, anything, you sort of do need standards and, and the ability for people to be recognized. So that, that there's so much to unpack there. And uh, unfortunately we're running short of time. So